won't I won't need twenty minutes. We'll see. And then when there is a question in the audience, we don't have microphones, so just like make a summary of the question. Of yeah. Thank you. <coughs> All right. So, uh, hello. <coughs> I am uh, Nick, or my full name is Dominic Dort. Um, maybe some of you already attended the talk. Ike and I did about Veripeditus yesterday. Is there anyone here who attended the Veripeditus talk yesterday? Okay. So, uh, I have to start off with a few excuses. I know you never do this in a talk, but um, first thing is the preparation for this was a two hour workshop and it uh, is now cut down to a 25 minute talk. So, um, I will give you a quick introduction into OSM alchemy. This is what we will do today. Uh, the second excuse is, um, yeah, actually, <laughs> actually, uh, this will be the most unprofessional talk in this room because I am not a geospatial expert at all. Uh, my knowledge about geospatial and uh, geography stuff basically boils down to what, what, what coordinates are. Um, so uh, this is a technical talk about how to handle OpenStreetMap data, and then you can do uh, all the fancy uh, geo stuff with this that you like. Okay. So uh, when we uh, develop Veripeditus, which is a framework for developing augmented reality games, uh, you maybe know uh, Pokemon Go or Ingress, and um, we started developing a framework that helps at creating such games. And we, had, we, we wanted to bind game objects like items and um, non-player characters and stuff like this uh, in this framework to OpenStreetMap objects. So we didn't only want uh, game developers to be able to just let uh, items and characters spawn at uh, given geolocations, but also at objects that are tagged on OpenStreetMap. And so uh, we had to find a way how to get hold of the full set of OpenStreetMap live data, which is, well, there are basically two ways to do this. One way is you can... Um, directly access the OpenStreetMap API. And uh, you can do this once, you can do this twice, but if you do this a few thousand times, uh, <laughs> then they will um, sooner or later get a bit angry with you. Or the servers will just not let you access it an anymore. You can't do this in a centralized server application. And the second way uh, we could have gone is uh, we could have just downloaded the whole planet data from OpenStreetMap, imported it in a huge database, which is, I don't have exact numbers, numbers, maybe one of you has, I think it's compressed in a tarball, it's uh, one and a half terabyte or something, I don't know. Um, so, and, and we didn't have the resources to handle this and we couldn't set up a database instance to uh, work with this data. And then we came up with an idea, um, or let's say we thought what needed to be done. Uh, we wanted to have all of OpenStreetMap available, not just a subset, but we wanted to have all of it. So people creating augmented reality games on the server, they shouldn't be limited in what they could do with the data. We wanted the application itself to only load relevant data, not the full set. Um, and the data should, ha uh, the, we wanted the data to be available uh, on the local server at any, at any point in time and not load it from the OpenStreetMap API. Um, every few seconds. There were a few cool, cool add-ons that we um, wanted to add. First of all, we were using SQL Alchemy, which is uh, an object relational mapper for SQL-based databases in Python. Uh, who of you knows SQL Alchemy? This is great. For those who don't, um, it, as I said, it is an object relational mapper, uh, which basically allows definition of database tables and views in pure Python objects. And you can access them as uh, pure Python objects and the mapper will uh, do all the work with the uh, relation, uh, creating the tables in the SQL database, maintaining relations with foreign keys and all of this stuff. Um, we wanted to keep this transparent so developers using SQL Alchemy um, could just use 
OpenStreetMap as if it were available in the local in the local SQL database, even if it isn't. So let's say the the application is querying for any object tagged shop equals shop equals bakery uh, somewhere in a bounding box, and then uh, they just make an SQL query, and then OSM Alchemy kicks in and says, "Oh, I don't have this data available. I get it from OpenStreetMap." places in the database, but this is all completely transparent for the developer. Yeah. Okay, we can. Um, this slide is a bit outdated because uh, due to the uh, uh, cutting of the two hour workshop, I now reuse the presentations from um, the presentations from uh, from another conference. Um, but still, yeah, OSM Alchemy is not yet so stable. We are using it in Veripeditus and it works quite well. It gets slow at some points when it gets com many concurrent uh, accesses, but uh, it works quite well. Um. <coughs> okay. So, um, before we get to an example how, to, how OSM Alchemy can be used in a Python application, uh, we implemented support for live OpenStreetMap data, so only the current data, not for historical data, because, well, um, there might be use for this, but normally in, a, in, a, in an application that users use, there is no need for historical data, for, uh, for old revisions of OpenStreetMap data, uh, but only for the current data set. And for this live data, we, re we, we support the basic OpenStreetMap data set, which consists of nodes, ways, and relations. Uh, who of you is not familiar to some extent with the OpenStreetMap data model, how the map data is made up? Okay. <coughs> so basically, the, it consists of uh, nodes that are at certain coordinates, and you can um, put these nodes together to a way or an area, and you can put uh, arbitrary objects together in a relation, and then you just extend it with key value pairs that make up the whole map rendering and all the properties of these map objects. So it's very easy to model in a relational database. <coughs> okay. So we use the, uh, the overpass API in the back end, which is <laughs> a bit, yeah, um, it works a bit better in this case, and it also allows uh, it also allows public access a bit more than uh, than the base OpenStreetMap API. Um, the most important component then is an SQL to overpass SQL compiler. You know, overpass uses this kind of uh, domain-specific language to query tags and bounding boxes and uh, all the kinds of data. Uh, but we, w as I said, we wanted the developers to only need to use SQL or the SQL wrapper in SQL Alchemy. And so uh, first thing we did is we built a comp compiler that gets an SQL query from SQL Alchemy, translates it, it compiles it in a, into an overpass SQL program and sends it to the overpass API, and then imports the resulting XML data back. Uh, and we implemented, of course, some, some caching so the so OSM Alchemy can actually figure out that some data is already available and doesn't need to reload it from the internet. <coughs> so the basic flow in OSM Alchemy is, uh, for example, we query for nodes within a bounding box. It kicks, it, it jumps into the, it, it is triggered by the SQL Alchemy module, intercepts the query, um, compiles it to overpass SQL. Then it gets a normalized hash of this, of this program and looks in the database uh, when this query was last run, if it was run at any time. If it was run recently, then it just uh, returns and does nothing and lets SQL Alchemy provide its data from the SQL backend. And if not, it does this uh, whole importing over PassQL there and so on. All that. <coughs> right. So here's a short example. Uh, for example, we want to get all bakeries within a bounding box. Um, then uh, SQL Alchemy is used like this in order to get uh, to query all objects of, uh, of the of the node class and filter it by uh, its latitude and longitude to create a bounding box. 
and oh, this is a latish issue. This should have been a quotation mark and an S for key equals shop. Um, and this results in an SQL query object, like so. And uh, open, then OSM Alchemy takes this query and compiles it to this simple, um, to this simple overpass query program. <laughs> Actually, this compiler was written by uh, Eike, who no, there was no one who <laughs> attended the very previous talk, actually. Uh, for a 14-year-old at this point who created this compiler, he did this. This was very cool, I think. <coughs> okay. So, let's look at an, at an example. So, um, using the Flask web framework, this is not uh, anything that has to do with OSM Alchemy, um, basically, but uh, we use it as a basic web application framework because it is easy to use. And to, uh, and to understand at this point. So um, this is basically everything we need to do in Python now to get um, the web application available. You can use whatever framework you like or no framework at all. Um, we create the SQL Alchemy object to access the database. This can be done with SQL Alchemy itself as well. We are using Flask SQL Alchemy here, which is a thin wrapper around. Uh, around SQL Alchemy to make it fit with, uh, in, into this micro, fr uh, micro web framework. And then all we need to do to add the OpenStreetMap tables to the database is just uh, create an instance of the OSM Alchemy library, um, passing the database object, telling it to actually use the overpass backend, create the tables and run it. And at this point we have um, the OpenStreetMap tables available and we can do for example, uh, we can do queries on osm.node or osm.way, uh, um, just as we like. Okay. <clears throat> so um, this is a slightly extended version of the program. It's a few more lines. Um, what we added is this. This is uh, for Flask Restless, which simply creates a RESTful interface, a JSON interface that you can query using HTTP. Um, and so with this simple program, we already have a program that gives us all of OpenStreetMap in a, with a JSON interface, with local caching and with not using nothing but a plain SQL database that we have and the OSM alchemy and the magic in the background. So, but at this point, we could already just well, with no authentication and nothing at all, this is uh, very basic, but you could now just go and uh, create an, uh, a web front end using AngularJS or jQuery or whatever you like, and just uh, access the OpenStreetMap data with well, whatever HTTP, localhost, um, slash API, slash, slash node, and then query for anything you like. And yeah, this is not so exciting because you could actually do this with OpenStreet, you could actually query OpenStreetMap from JavaScript uh, itself and wouldn't need this um, the server, but it gets more important when we want to link um, OpenStreetMap data with our own data in SQL. And this is a very neat thing, we can now have, we can now put a foreign key in our own database table that maps to an OpenStreetMap object and will show up in SQL Alchemy as a relation. So um, <coughs> those of you who know SQL Alchemy, which was most of you as I remember, um, this is a basic database model in SQL Alchemy. It will, for those who do not know SQL Alchemy, uh, this will just map to an SQL table called review in this case, um, which will have an integer column as a primary key called ID, and it will have uh, a foreign key column called OSM node ID, which maps to the OSM nodes table, which will be filled by OSM Alchemy with live data from OpenStreetMap. And what we can do when we have an, an instance of this review class in our application, we can now just, let's say we call this instance my review, we can just do my review.osm node dot text and then we have the dictionary of text of this node and we can just see in our application, in our object model, um, what OSM node this is linked to. 
And then there are two columns, one for stars, which is an integer column, and a, and a Unicode string column called comment. So what we did now is we can create reviews for arbitrary OpenStreetMap nodes, like bakeries or restaurants or hotels or whatever. We can um, add a specific number of stars to this review, just like you know from any, uh, any review platform. Uh, and we can add a comment, and this is automatically linked to the live OpenStreetMap data. And should we lose this OpenStreetMap data at some point in time, or it needs an update, or some alchemy will do, and we will always have a foreign key link to the real OpenStreetMap object here. And we can just, we can see it in the JSON, we can see it in our object model, we can see and use it everywhere. Like so. Uh, this query gets, uh, it, it, it queries uh, for all OpenStreetMap nodes and filters them by ID. So we just get a single OSM node here with this query. Uh, this bakery is actually uh, my favorite bakery ne next, to my, next to where I live. And then we create an instance of the review class uh, and provide all the columns we need. Uh, we provide an argument OSM node which is passed the bakery object for the foreign key. We, pr we provide the number of stars and the comment. And yeah, we add it to the database and commit it. And everything is, everything is done. And now we have this, these two linked objects, just uh, as if there weren't any OpenStreetMap backend at all. <coughs> OK. And then, for example, if we query uh, the REST interface, for this uh, OpenStreetMap node, uh, we also get a back reference. So we can now just query for OpenStreetMap nodes, and we will automatically get all reviews from our local data model linked with this OpenStreetMap object. Yeah. So we can now, for example, in the web interface, just have, a, have an OpenStreetMap uh, somewhere in a, uh, in a leaflet map or something, and have the user uh, click on any OpenStreetMap object there, if we have a data layer, and then we can ask our review service, uh, our review web, web application, um, to return this OpenStreetMap object, and it will be filled with the back references to our local data. And yes, uh, we are recreating Yelp with this. <coughs> okay. Um, do I have time for a live demonstration? No, not really. Okay. <coughs> Pardon? Five minutes, yeah. Plus. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anyone here who did not get the basic idea and needs uh, yeah, needs me to show this in, in practice, how this will look when I access it with, uh, with a browser or a client? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we get to the question or uh, feedback minutes. Um, so as I already mentioned in the introduction, this is not so much about uh, actually handling geospatial data, but it is about getting the OpenStreetMap data into your application and then you can use it for everything you like. You can could actually add uh, PostGIS to it as, a, as an additional layer and uh, then you get all the fancy geospatial querying functionality that it provides. Um, you can, of course, do your own calculations with, uh, with the geodata from OpenStreetMap. You can link it with your own geodata in, uh, in the database just as you like. OK. So um, maybe let's skip to this first. Um, you can find OSM Alchemy uh, on GitHub. I am not so sure whether this uh, URL still works. It should. I hope that GitHub still redirects it. If not, you will find it in the Veripeditus organization. You can find an example use of OSM Alchemy at the Veripeditus server application. And if you have any questions or want to play with it or try it out or have any feedback, uh, just uh, report an issue at, uh, on GitHub or just ping me by email or Jabber. There are uh, more contacts. Uh, there, there are more contact possibilities in the GitHub repository, I think. <coughs> All right. So what we are 
as I said, we are using it in the augmented, rea in the augmented reality framework, Veripeditus. Um, you can try it here on campus, actually. You can go to nightly.veripeditus.org uh, and register, and you can play an augmented reality game that uses OpenStreetMap data uh, from this um, from OSM Alchemy to yeah, provide an augmented reality game here on campus. And uh, the next project will be creating a basic review and check-in service like the like Foursquare or Yelp where you can uh, review any location or can check in at locations using OpenStreetMap open data just like I showed in the example. Uh, yeah, We will see what turns out of that. Yeah. Maybe I can get some fe feedback from from you uh, for this idea. Uh, any ideas what uh, you think could be done with OSM Alchemy? Anything that you think is a bad idea or a good idea? Actually, when we started this, we weren't so sure whether it would work out in the end. If it would be, a, if it could be a good idea to um, add uh, this much transparency and uh, abstraction to it, but it turned out to work quite well. But uh, maybe uh, there are some critical voices who can warn us that something will fail big at some point in time or something. Good. Everything could happen. So, any questions, ideas, or feedback? Uh, um, hi. Yeah. yeah, hi. <laughs> Um, the question was how we uh, could expose the GraphQL interface from SQL Alchemy. You have tried to make a graph, uh, GraphQL API uh, beside the REST API, and if it works, because sometimes the, the GraphM library is quite tricky. Uh, we haven't tried this, but uh, we could, or we would uh, even be more happy if you could actually try. Um, <laughs> so. You, we well, OSM Alchemy is limited to uh, creating these uh, to, to creating the database entries on the fly, and the rest is pure SQL Alchemy. We didn't mod mod modify SQL Alchemy. Um, we just uh, add triggers to get the data online. So if uh, what you imagine to do with GraphQL works with uh, the basic SQL Alchemy, it will also work with the OpenStreetMap data that gets into it. <laughs> so uh, neither SQL Alchemy, no, no, well, SQL Alchemy doesn't know that there is OSM Alchemy. It just runs the trigger code and then it forgets about it. <coughs> yep. Yeah, it's you. <laughs> um, can I throw random overpass uh, API queries at the code, or do I have to use the Um <coughs> Actually, well, uh, you, you could also throw overpass QL queries into OSM Alchemy. We do not expose this API, but uh, in Python you can use whatever whatever functions from a module that you like. So you could do this. We do not expose it right now because we really only have this uh, transparency through SQL Alchemy. But you could, yeah. We could probably expo expose it as well, yeah, if it is important. Yeah. Um, if the local bakery disappears, then um, it will at some point disappear from the database. It will be if you enable caching in OSM Alchemy and it doesn't look at the object um, w within, let's say, a day or so, then it won't vanish for a day. Um, but then it will, of course, vanish, yes. So. But there, uh, because uh, OpenStreetMap objects could vanish, we um, did not add hard foreign key constraints to um, to the data model, so actually, so your database won't get inconsistent when the OSM nodes vanish. So you will still, in this example, keep the reviews, and you can probably link them to another OSM element in some maintenance code or something, yeah. or just drop them. Yeah. Okay, I am a bit short-sighted. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so any more questions? Yeah, at the back. Can it work without uh, access to the overpass API server? Yes, it can. Um, 
the question was whether it, uh, whether also MRKME can work offline without accessing overpass. Um, and yes, it can. Well, of course, you will have to make sure to get the data you need.